Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Atma Podcast, where we give you the tips, tools, and strategies you need to be successful. My name is Brian, and I'll be your host today. Today, we're going to be talking about selling in 2021 with yours truly, Brian Acosta. I'm the VP of Adventure Marketing Agency, but I have a special guest with me today. His name is Christian Guzman. He's actually a customer service rep at Order Delivery. So say hello, Christian. Hey, guys. How's everybody doing today? He's probably wondering why he's here, and we're going to tell you why he's here later. I have no idea why I'm here. <laughs> it's true. I just told him, hey, you're going to be on this podcast today, and we're going to be talking about selling, even though you're a customer service rep. But that, nevertheless, it's always important, and, and you're going to figure out very, very quickly why he's here today. But before that, um, let's, say, let's say thank you to our sponsors, why don't we? Our first sponsor is Nivades Coworking. Now, if you don't know, Nuva Desk Coworking is a collaborative type area uh, meant to help business owners and entrepreneurs think big. If you're a business owner or an entrepreneur needing an office space, conference rooms, or just a place to work, visit nuvodesk.com and receive a free day pass. That's right. Absolutely free. Now, our second sponsor is Or Delivery, which Christian here is a part of Or Delivery. Or Delivery is an online delivery service designed to help restaurants grow their business without those ridiculous, and I mean ridiculous, rates. Um, if you are a restaurant owner that is wanting to add online delivery to your business, visit orderlivery.com. Now, let's get to the fun. The amazing Christian Guzman. Give him an applause, everyone. Give him applause. <laughs> I don't remember what button it is. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> Now let's talk about selling because that's what everybody's here to listen yep. to is the selling. What? And I, I got a question for everyone is how do you define sales? How do you define sales, Christian? Uh, really just building value to the product that you're, you know, trying to sell to people. Um, so building value, that's one. Okay. Building value. Uh, as far as people to people go, adaptability, you know, being adaptable to people that you talk to. Uh, kind of learning about other people and how you can help them out. Um, eventually, that's what that's what sells a product, you know, just building that value, getting to know the people that you're talking to, and, yeah, just kind of going from there. Here, here, Here's, you know, one thing that I define sales is not building value. It's building relationships. That too, yeah, totally. So a lot of people, when they, you know, they, you have a ton of salespeople out there, a ton of salespeople or sales professionals, I should say, sales experts, we shall call them, uh, that do a ton of sales training. And, you know, there, there, ha- there are things, you know, that are important in sales, like scripts and process and things like that and how to make a phone call. But, you know, how long have you, before you were customer service for delivery, you were doing sales for how long? Probably about five, six years. So, so... You know, I've, and I actually personally trained you in sales, right? And that's why you're here, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Brian showed me the ropes a little bit when when we got into the fitness industry and uh, kind of just went from there. After that, I kind of bounced around, learned a lot of different things. <laughs> you actually went to retail. You went to a couple of different types of uh, businesses, but, you know, the sales stuck with you, right? And when we brought you on a customer service, you know, would you say that those sales tactics that you were taught has helped you through customer service? Uh, very much so. You know, it, it, it builds a lot of confidence when you're, when you sell, you know, it, it's, it's being confident. You got to be confident in what you're selling about. If you're not confident in it, you're not going to do anything about it. Uh, you're not going to sell it. You know, people aren't going to believe what you're trying to sell. So, you know, you know, learn, learning that confidence and, uh, and everything and kind of learning the process and everything. It really helps, on the customer service side of things. Cause it enables me to help people in a better way. Help. That's the key word right there. Help, right? You're helping people. So that this is how I define sales. All right. Professionally helping someone decide what to buy that, that at, at the end of the day is that's what you're doing. You're, you're professionally helping keyword, helping someone decide to buy a product or service from you, right? And 
And I think that's a lot that that's where a lot of people go wrong in sales because what they, when they think of sales, you know, they're so accustomed to the old ways of, you know, numbers, 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 how many phone calls. And that is important. I'm not saying that that's not important. Um, it's important to keep on those phone calls and, and stay dialing, right? Uh, going B2B and doing all of that. But where people go, not go wrong, but kind of like not think about, they don't think about what is it going to take to actually make the sale. And at the end of the day, people buy from people they know, like, and trust. Okay? Exactly. So if they go into, if you go into a retail store and you're the 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 sales associate there, can I help you with something, right? Can I help you with something? And then you build that relationship with them. They're going to be like, oh, you know, that person helped me. I want to deal with that person. I don't want to deal with anybody else. And it happens a lot. It's not, it's not just, you know, insurance or real estate or, um, you know, there's all kinds of things out there. There's like, it's, it's primarily sales. It's retail. It's, it's just the foundation of the entire business. Business revolves around one thing, right? And we talked about this in our last episode. It's cash flow. Money coming in. Well, how yep. do you have money coming in? Well, if you live by the rule of people buy from people they know, like, and trust, then you actually have something to go off of. That's why you've made a great customer service rep in order delivery is because you know what it takes to get somebody to like you and to trust you to calm them down, right? Yep, yep. It's all about, uh, you know, dealing with customer fires is like, you know, just a thing that you deal with on a daily basis at doing customer service. So, you know, learning all this stuff and learning how to talk to people really helps, uh, you know, being able to manage that and, you know, it's all about the energy. You. It's, it's an energy too. Cause exactly. Like, Cause that's what a lot of people don't understand is like the energy that you give off to somebody has a lot to do with the decision making of a buyer and are they going to do continuous business with you? And, and here's where I'll say just continuing on to where people go wrong is they think the sale is done when they walk out the door and their cash is in their pocket. No, it's not done. So, ever. you know, when it comes to marketing, we talk about like, um, you know, HubSpot, we're HubSpot certified, right? And it talks about the flywheel and how to attract, you know, um, how to attract strangers and then how to engage with them so they become prospects. And then what will then, after engaging with them, how they become customers. And then here's people where people just, I don't know what happens in business, but they just f- completely forget about delighting the customer, which is making them happy. Yep. And where they become promoters. So they start to refer you business. So either two things happen in, in business, in a prospect, actually. When they become a customer, they either do two things. Um they either hate your business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Buying buy buyers regret. Okay. Buyers yeah, regret. Yeah. Or they love your business. They become promoters and then they refer you business. And if they become promoters, most likely they're gonna buy more continuously from you. Yep. Like everybody's like, I have that that favorite restaurant. Everybody knows that, that, that restaurant that they just love. And you go over and over and over because you like the food, right? Mm-hmm. Now, imagine if a restaurant, and this happened before. This has happened before. Imagine if the restaurant has great, great food, but their customer service is just terrible. So I actually have had this happen to me is I go to a restaurant and I purchase a lot from them throughout the year. And for some reason, and, and, and here's the deal about it is that I get that they're short staffed, things like that. There's things that you can't control, but when you have bad and it wasn't anything like ridiculous, but when you have bad customer service, that's when you, you kill it. Yep. Okay. So, you know, and, and I feel for those restaurants right now, just so you know, those restaurants are suffering right now during COVID. Um, this, this shortage of staff, it's crazy right now. And, and and so how does a restaurant redefine their sales process and customer service process? Because the customer service is part of the sales process. Okay. And that's what a lot of people need to understand. The customer service is part of the sales process. So how do you redefine that if there's people, if you're short of staff? shortage of staff, right? You have to think of different ways. You have to think 
of different ways on how to still produce the same quality of customer service, which is what we're doing right now. We're working on a project to do so. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, on top of that, you know, it's a, uh uh, you know, the, the core values of a company is, you know, if you live by those core values of any company you're working for, anything like that, that's, what's going to help you provide that great customer service. You know, our business is to help restaurants to, you know, grow or, uh, just help them out in general. There's a crazy overpriced commission, uh, that we're, you know, trying to help restaurants out with. And, and let's talk about that real quick. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Because we're, we're talking about what makes a good salesperson, and you hit it right on a dot, the the core values of a company. You know what makes a really good salesperson? It's not the salesperson. It's not who can talk the most. It's not who can talk the best. Because everybody, honestly, nobody likes a sneezy salesperson anymore. It's actually the person that is bought into the company the most that makes the best salesperson. Yep. And, 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 and when you have, uh, and some people have uh, said this before, right? If you're the business owner, you're the best salesperson of that business. Why? Because you're bought in. You're bought into the core values, your principles of your business. So you understand the business better than anyone, right? Yep. So the best salesperson is somebody who understands the business better than anybody else. Because they understand what it takes to grow the business and also what they provide. And if they feel comfortable enough to sell their business, then that means they believe in their product or service. So, one, you have to find somebody that will buy into the company. And two, you as the business owner need to sell to the salesperson saying that we can provide absolute you know the best customer service, the best service or product out there. And that will in return pump up the salesperson. Yeah. And it's all, it's all about getting that salesperson to see the value in your company, see the vision and what you're trying to do and, you know, to establish yourself, you know, um, essentially whenever I sell or I help people out, you know, it, whether it's customer service or sales, uh, what, what did we used to do when we were working in the gym industry? You remember? Our process? Yeah, we used to be a, a fitness consultant. Yeah. And what was Changing the process? Lives. What was the process to that? We would change their lives for the better. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Brian not remembering what the process was. No, no, no. The process is pretty simple. You would, it, it was it was really simple, actually. It was just, hey, you know, they would come in. You would sit down with them. You would explain to them what you're about to do. Because oh, he does remember. Exactly. Man, I know this. <laughs> I, I'm not going to get into the, the secret sauce, but I'm just going to say, explain to them what you're about to do, right? And then you would show them in, around the facility, and then you would show them how easy it is to get started, right? Exactly. Wink, wink. Oh, by the way, if you didn't know, you know, we actually, uh, Adventure Marketing Agency, helped with the sales process here at Nuva Desk Coworking. So we took that similar process. Same thing. Just took it in. And it's just office spaces, right? Yeah. It's, so it's, it's essentially the same thing. Absolutely. So we were saying, what are you? You're a business consultant. That's yeah, what you are. Pretty much. So what you're saying is, hey, you know, what I'd like to do is, is um, get to know what your business is all about. I want to see if you're a right fit for us. Honestly, if you say that too, I want to see if you're a good fit for us. Because look, here's the honest truth about sales is not all the customers are good fits for your business. Nope. No, they're not. Some uh, some of them some of them will sometimes just honestly waste your time, to be honest <laughs> with you. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. I've run into it a lot, you know. Uh because and when I say waste time, I don't mean that. I don't. I don't mean to try to sound rude or anything. It's just uh, when you're legitimately trying to help them out, you tell them what they need to do. They don't want to follow that. So that's how you kind of. Oh man, that sounds. You know what that sounds like? It sounds like a personal trainer. Yeah. Hey, hey, let's go back to the fitness industry, yeah. okay? So if you you hire a personal trainer, get this: if you hire a personal trainer, but then you tell your personal trainer, you know what? I'm not going to listen to you. But sir, I'm trying to help you lose weight. I need you to come in six days a week, right? I need you to eat yep. X, Y, Z. And then you're like, I don't want to do that. No, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> it, do, it, do, it does not work like that. You go, it, it doesn't work like that anywhere you go to. I mean, uh, like I, I worked at Guitar Center for for a good while, and you know, I learned a lot. I learned a lot while I was there. And my whole process was, as soon as a customer comes in, I introduce myself, 
shake their hand even before COVID, obviously. Uh, and yeah, man, you just spit in that hand and say, "All right, bring it <laughs> pretty in." Pretty much, <laughs> man. Pretty much, you you build that relationship right then and there just by introducing yourself. Uh, from there, my whole process is pre qualify, meaning I get to know them. Like I just get to know the customer, get to know what their needs are, get to know what they're looking for, who they are. Who they are, too. I make personal connections. Doesn't matter about what, you know? Well, as you said, the right, the right words, like personal connection. What does it take to sell in 2021? Here, Here's the thing. It doesn't matter if it's through Zoom. It doesn't matter if it's over the phone. It doesn't matter. That sounds like The Rock, right? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, but it doesn't. It doesn't matter where you're selling, what, and, and, and if you, even if email. Here's the thing about email too. Like you have to personalize it, right? Yep. Because you get with up hit with all these different types of emails and they're plain Jane. Nobody wants to do business with plain Jane. That's why they call her plain Jane, because she's plain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's true. That's okay? uh, very true. So when you have to personalize it, you personalize the phone calls, you get the script. Okay. If you're writing scripts and you're a consultant, you can you have to train your staff. Or whoever's helping you with your sales process, they have to. And I mean, have to. Yeah, okay, scripts are great. Write a script. That's a great process. I have a script right now here, you know, for this podcast. I'm not going to lie. But does it sound like a script? No, it doesn't sound like a script. You know why it doesn't sound like a script? Because I personalized it. I'm talking to you in that camera and saying, hey, listen, you want to sell? Don't sell. You know, and I, and you know that that you know talking about scripts that brings me back to core value, right? So, I I am terrible with scripts. Brian knows this. Everybody's works with me. I don't do scripts. I cannot do scripts. But what I do but, use a script for is the core values. But the roadmap. Okay, so that's so see that's where a lot of people a lot of salespeople go wrong. Mm -hmm. The script isn't just for you to follow it. Yeah. And if you just follow the script, you're not going to be successful. Yeah. A script, you have to memorize a script so you can know your presentation by heart, okay? So this is like a 30-second commercial. You know what? Remember when I gave you a 30-second commercial a while, while, long, long back? Yeah. Okay? That's horrible. Okay. So <laughs> I always teach people this. First, you have to know what to say. Then you learn how to say it. And then you talk about body movement, performing, okay? And it's the same thing as like music. Music, when you're... When you're doing music, right, you have the the the, the music sheet. Because I was in drumline for a very long time, right? And so in music sheet, you'd have to play this one line over and over and over and over and over again. And it would just get annoying, honestly. Yeah. But after we practiced it over and over and over again, then it was just muscle memory at that time. So when it becomes muscle memory, then we started to put some action in it. Okay? Then it became a performance. And that's how music is, is supposed to be practiced. Yeah. Well... If you imagine sales as music, then you would understand, okay, you know, hey guys, my name is Brian. The company I'm with is Advertory Marketing Agents. So we specialize in helping your business with the tips, tools, and strategies you need to be successful. Right? It was very animated. Yep. Okay. And but it's but it was a script. But you don't want to make it sound like a script, right? Hey, you Christian. Over there in that corner over there, I know you're networking with me here, at, at, you know, in Arlington, Texas, but I, I want you to know my name is Brian and the company I'm with is Adventure New Market. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, you know, talking about that, talking about personalizing and things like that. It's it's crazy because uh, one thing one thing I think I'm, re I'm really good at is uh, is adapting to people. Um, what do you mean I, by adapting? So I do not talk to anybody the same way. I don't talk to any customer the same way. I still, why you don't know, you talk to anybody the same way? Everybody's different. Am I different? You're different. I'm very different. You're very different. <laughs> so, I'm a unique character. Yeah. Brian has to be, you got to be upbeat to talk to with Brian. Cause he's a very upbeat person and kind of crazy. So, uh, but I start to lose track. Yeah, he does. Uh, <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> oh God. Hey uh, man, if you're selling to me, you better, you better be animated. Okay. Pretty much. I, I'm telling you right now, if you bore me, I'm like, there's a butterfly in the air. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. <laughs> kind of what I'm saying, yes. But uh yeah, you know, essentially you're uh you know, you want to you know you want to be adaptable and be able to talk to pe uh, different people in different ways. Everybody has a different personality, you know? It's just that's the tricky part right there's 
talking to people. You know, one thing that uh, that I did learn, you know, in business, and not it doesn't just have to do with sales, but it has to do with all business and just people in general. What people actually need to learn is the different types of personality personalities out there, because there's like, yep. and there's different tests out there. Um, it, it it really just depends on you know which which I guess. Uh, system you'd like to do because um, there's one that's like the red blue green yellow they they categorize the different types of people in colors and then there's another one called like the disc uh, uh, disc assessment it's like disc i remember you using that yeah yeah so like but if you it, it, at the end of the day those two th- systems teaches you everything you need to know about people right because they are all, all categorized in these four now they're all categorized, but they have different traits of the different personalities. But if you can understand who they are, then you can understand how to communicate with you. Because there's some people that are very number based. Like you can, nothing matters except for numbers. Okay. They're the analytical people. Other people, man, it doesn't matter if the numbers don't make sense. What matters is, do I like you? And others are like, well, I want to be a part of a team and grow with the team. And be a part of something, right? And then you have some people that are like kumbaya, right? Like if you don't, if you're not kumbaya, there's no peace and tranquility. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't work here anymore because there's so much stress. Okay, so you have some some you know people that are to themselves, some people that are bubbly and everybody. But if you understand these different types of personalities, which I would recommend. In fact, if you are a salesperson. You cannot sell unless you understand the disc assessment. Okay, that's my that's my tip of the day. You go out and you Google disc D I S C assessment. If you're a salesperson, if you don't do this, then I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. <laughs> you might want to change careers because you don't understand people. Yeah, and you know it's uh it's it's. Like I said, at the end of the day, your your goal, your goal when you're either selling or working in customer service, it doesn't matter. Your goal is to help people. That's that's at the end of the day what the goal is. Uh, you help people, and then people feel, and you know, let let them know that you appreciate their support and business, and you know, let them know all these things because at the end of the day, that's what's going to get them to come back to you is the fact that you actually took the time to help them find what they need or get what they need, and that that's what it's all about. It's all about helping. So let's talk about something because obviously I'm, we're, you know, the Atma, market it with Atma, right? Yep. We're a marketing agency. What is marketing? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a good question, Brian. That's Can you answer question, question? Brian, Answer that question for me. So if sales, if sales is one-on-one, mm-hmm. okay, if sales is one-on-one, then marketing is sales yeah, to a yeah, thousand, yeah. okay? So, what makes a good marketing agency? A good marketing agency understands sales. It understands personalities. It understands how to communicate, right? And so, that's what makes a good marketing company is understanding that sales and marketing go hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. And let me tell you why, right? In sales... Do you like cold calls or do you like warm calls? I like warm calls. Okay. Everybody loves the warm calls. Cold calls are difficult. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but if you made a cold call and they heard about your company, does that make it easier? Yeah, it does actually. Okay. If they haven't heard about your company, does that make it harder? Yes. There you go. People don't know who you are. So, so now they know the company, okay? Now... The salesperson just needs to work on getting them to like and trust them to do business with that co- corporation. See, that's a lot. A lot of people don't think of that. They think, you know, when they think of marketing, they're like, I need leads, 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 leads. Hey, man, how can I program this person to know your company? How can I program them to say, yeah, I've heard about that before. Yeah, I've seen that around. How many times when we used to go networking and be like, and be like, oh, so so what do you do, Brian? And I'm like, well, I, you know, I'm a, I'm part of a company called Avid Trinity Marketing Agency. And they're like, oh, yeah, I've heard about you guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's that's who we are. Yeah. Here's my business card. Give me a call if you ever need me. Uh, uh, that's it. That's it. Oh, I actually need help with search engine optimizing. Oh, OK. That's what that's what we do. Let's talk about that. There you go. Let's talk about that. 
first you have to book a call because I'm really busy. You know why I'm really busy? Because I'm making it happen. I'm making it happen, baby. Making it happen. Yeah, Brian's a character. <laughs> but hey, uh, you gotta have fun with this thing because yeah, you know, obviously, obviously, if we're stale, nobody's gonna listen to us. <laughs> Anybody that's be like, let's go on to the next podcast, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, I just again, I want to point out that I did not know I was doing this today. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, that's what it's all about, man. Yeah, you gotta put throw people in the fire. The fire. Yeah, you like to do that a lot. <laughs> hey, that's what makes good, good character. Okay, it does, it does, it does. And uh, you know, yeah. Um, see, now, now, now we're now we're losing track here. <laughs> Sales, Sales, twenty twenty one. No, no, no. Before we close out, though, because we, you know, uh, it's been it's been a great great episode. But here's the deal: uh, when it comes on a serious note, if I'm talking to you, business owners, all right, you are the salesperson, no matter what. Okay, if you own a business, you are the salesperson. Okay, and it's your job to sell to your. It's not just in, your job to sell uh, to the consumers. Obviously, you can do that because you you know your product. And if you do, if you have str- if you're struggling to sell your product to consumers as a business owner, then what you need to do is you need to believe in your product first. That's the first thing you need to do. The second thing you got to do is you got to understand personalities. Okay. Once you un- believe in your product and you understand personalities and how to communicate with those personalities, your sales are going to go up. And then thirdly, once you start to bring on salespeople, your job is to sell the salespeople that you believe in your product. Yeah. Not only that, not only that, train them on your product. You know, you sell them on it, tell them what you're trying to do, get them to believe in what you're doing, and then, you know, train them on it. Cause that's the thing. Let me, let me tell you a real quick story. So when I first started at guitar center, I, man, I was not knowledgeable <laughs> on, on guitars <laughs> or equipment. Thought. Okay. So <laughs> let me get, let me tell you a story. Actually, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. So Chris has been playing guitar since high school. And now he's just telling me that he had a lack of information. All right. So hold on, get hold on, educated. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. junior high, Oh, junior high. <laughs> A lack of education under product or service also does not help your sales process. Okay, um, so those if if you're listening to this, look, you have to have, and, and I hate to say this because it's it's like redundant and people don't want to do this. Where's your business plan? If you don't have a business plan, and it's not because it's a plan, it's an overall, you know, it's just an overall description of your business. Can you describe your products in detail? Because let me tell you something. We do web development, search engine optimization, and social media for a living. Every single time, I kid you not, every single time that we're getting to the website, they don't have the content, okay? So we're going to help them with the content. They can't sometimes describe their own product. Write it down. Get a piece of paper and a pen and write out your products and services and describe them. And how much they cost. And let me, let me, let me also throw something out there, uh, you know, on top of this, you want to find people who are motivated to learn. That's the other thing too. We didn't even touch on, um, you know, sure. that motivation. Cause look, yeah, I, I went into guitar center. I did not know much about, you know, the equipment or anything like that, but I learned I knew nothing about PA systems. I knew nothing about podcasting. I knew nothing about recording. Hey, now you're looking, you're doing the podcast now. And now I'm running the podcast over here. You know, I learned a lot. And, you know, uh, not only that, I learned more about my instrument. You know, essentially I played guitar and I wasn't really that great. Didn't know much about the guitar. But next thing you know, hey, you start learning a bunch of stuff. Once you start learning a bunch of stuff, you start falling in love with all this knowledge. Then you're able to freaking pass it on to other people. It's crazy. So let's talk about 2021. Mm -hmm. Okay, because everybody's... That's a topic for today, selling in 2021. Everything's gone virtual. Yeah, yeah, it has. Okay. How comfortable you are about doing like a podcast like this? How comfortable are you on doing like video conference calls? How comfortable are you about recording a presentation of yourself and sending it to somebody? How comfortable are you about doing a Facebook Live? How comfortable are you about doing a YouTube? So you get get the point, right? Yep. If everything is going digital... And it, I think selling might be easier if you can just send out a video saying, hey, look, take this pre- presentation. You can practice over and over again. 
But how comfortable are you about being on camera, on being on a microphone? Because that's the new, you know, norm. Yeah. Okay. And and selling in 2021 hasn't changed very much about selling. The only thing that has changed is probably the in-person. Okay. But it is our job as salespeople to be personal no matter what platform we're on. If it doesn't matter if we're on a podcast, it doesn't matter if we're on a computer, it doesn't matter. So if, you know, 2021, if things are going virtual, which they're going to be virtual for quite a while, then you got to figure out how to do this and how to be personal and how to be, how to get people to like you over the camera, over the phone, over just technology, right? Yep. yep. How not to bore people. Yeah. I mean, all that, all that's important, but you know what? You can still have conversations. You you can still have conversations. You still can, you can still connect with people. Um, but you know what? Let, let me tell you at the end of the day, cause I know we're going to have to close out here in a little bit, but at the end of the day, the most important thing out of everything that we told you when it comes to sales, it's have fun with it. It's have fun and it's then build, fun. Per, build relationships, right? Have fun, build relationships and just keep it going. You know, once you build more relationships, start stacking on and you start getting to meet people through other people and, you know, just have fun with it, guys. Just have fun with it. Awesome. Well, thank you, Christian, for being my guest and doing this on sporadically. So everybody watching, we did do this sporadically. It doesn't matter. We're having fun and we're hoping that it taught you something a little bit about sales here in 2021. Our next episode, um, Wendy will be back. Uh, she couldn't be here. So we're praying that she gets better. She's actually ill. Uh, so we're praying that she, she gets better so that, um, you know, I don't take over the stage again. Uh, but the next time we're going to be talking, uh, about becoming needed, how to take over the market. It's going to be a good episode. It's going to be a good episode. So once, once again, we want to say thank you to our, um, our sponsors, new desk and order delivery. We'll see you next time on market it with Apple. Have a good one, everybody. <laughs>